At the center of our world lies the Middle East, and at its very heart, the ancient land which is Iraq. Two great rivers span its length, the Tigris and Euphrates. In the plain, made rich and fertile by their waters, the earliest civilizations known to man were born. Out of this ancient heritage, the citizens of one of the world's youngest nations are building a new life and a modern state. Ageless Iraq is no longer a remote, isolated country. Today, she is a main junction linking the east and west. Her capital is Baghdad name that conjures up all the romance of Harun al-Rashid and the Arabian Nights of a thousand years ago, when this was the fabulous capital of the Islamic world. The tempo of an age-old way of life contrasts with the swifter rhythm of the new. The 20th century has come to Baghdad with steel and concrete, with shining cars and wide streets. But the people of Iraq hold on to the best of their old traditions. In the bazaars, you can see and hear them carrying on the art and exquisite craftsmanship that has been their pride for hundreds of years. Two thousand years before Christ, the world's first code of justice was laid down in the halls of Babylon. Today, in Baghdad, a modern police force upholds the laws of a sovereign state. the streets of the city are alive with the bustle of a young people who are taking back from the West the means to a brighter future. And in their enjoyment of sport, the same is true. From three Arab stallions brought to England over 200 years ago, every thoroughbred has been sired. Today, their descendants run on every race course in the West. And now, in the 20th century, the sport of kings has come into its own in Baghdad, and how the people love it. For the people of Iraq, the waters of the two great rivers, Tigris and Euphrates, are indeed the waters of life. All through history, this land has drawn its food, its whole existence, from these two waterways. Between the twin rivers, so legend says, was the world's first garden, the Garden of Eden. And here there is still the miracle of the water. With water, man has made the desert green with grain and vegetables, rich with spices and dates for all the world. Without the water of the two great rivers, and without the skill that makes them serve the land, much of Iraq would be a desert.
Only in the mountains and valleys of the north is there enough rain and snow to help the farmers cultivate their fields. Here, the life of the Kurdish tribes, farmers and hunters all, still follows an age-old pattern set by the sun and the changing seasons. When you visit one of their villages, you begin to remember Jacob and his flocks, and Rebecca at the well. The men are already in the fields, tending the vines, watering the crops, as they have done from the time of Abraham, pausing only to offer a prayer to God for his goodness. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Adwan la ilaha illallah. Adwan la ilaha illallah. In Iraq, as in every land, the housewife's work is never done. For their husbands, the day's work over, there is time to sip a glass of tea and talk of what the future holds in store for them and their children. But with the coming of spring and the sowing of the seed, all become young again and rejoice. mountains of the north where the waters rise, down across the central plains to the burning heat of the Persian Gulf, where the twin rivers join in the Shat al Arab. Here lies the great port of Basra, at the crossroads of the world's trade. For generations, seafaring men have made this their port of call, and the fables of Sinbad the sailor were based on the stories they told. Today, the modern port of Basra is Iraq's waterway to the world. Ships laden with the goods of the new age sail out from the Persian Gulf to the Indian Ocean and the Far Orient. And the skies over Basra are thronged with the traffic of the air. Now I have your attention, And yet, within a few minutes flying time of Basra, is a strangely different world. You're back in another age. Here, amid lakes and marshes, water has created a way of life all its own. life well suited to these strange surroundings and at the same time a living reminder of that remote past when men settled by these waters to found the first great cities known to man. Erek, Eridu, Gur of the Chaldees, these were the first cities of the world. For here in Iraq men first began to build and create a settled way of life. Here were the very beginnings of civilization. 
the splendor of Babylon is gone, and with it the glories of Assyria. But when you look at the ancient walls of Babylon, with their wonderful animals carved in brick, which in a miraculous way have survived the centuries, you begin to understand the magnificence of Iraq's heritage. For to this place came a long line of conquerors, Persian, Parthians, Sasanians, the Greeks of Alexander the Great, and then the Arabs, marching to the inspiration of a voice heard in Mecca. Here, beside the waters, in a land made fertile with irrigation, the life of Islam flourished for more than 600 years. It was a time of peace and learning, amid the gracious life of the Arabian Nights, when the lovely Scheherazade spun her tales before her king. Then, in our own Middle Ages, the Mongol hordes swept over this land in a tempest of destruction. wanderers upon the face of the earth, and the desert reclaimed the land that men had made fruitful. But in the dark ages that followed, the people of Iraq survived sustained by the bond of a common religion, their faith in Islam. Almost 700 years later, Iraq regained her independence. In 1953, the young kingdom celebrated its first 21 years of existence and the crowning of a young king, the direct descendant of the prophet. The coronation opened a new era in the life of the people of Iraq, listening to their king humbly pledge himself to their future. بالله أنني أحافظ على أحكام القانون الأساسي واستقلال البلاد والإخلاص للأمة والوطن King Faisal's reign began in an atmosphere of warm goodwill, of confidence in the future and pride in what had already been achieved. In the first 21 years of Iraq's independence, modern industries have taken root. Most important of all, great irrigation schemes have been put in hand to control the waters and lead them once again over the arid plains. Iraq's other great natural wealth is oil, untapped until this century. But now her oil fields are being continuously developed and the revenue from this new wealth is being used to create more wealth for the betterment of the country.
expect these first fruits of her far-sighted planning and enterprise, Iraq has built up a first-class fighting force, highly disciplined and well-equipped. Water is flowing once more, flowing from the rivers back onto the land, making the desert green again. Agriculture is thriving. Modern machinery and new techniques promise new prosperity. The face of the land is changing. For Nebuchadnezzar, the eternal fires of Baba Goga, the burning fiery furnace of the Old Testament story, were evidence unread of the dark seas sleeping beneath his kingdom. Today, her revenues from oil are helping Iraq to lay the foundation for a new standard of well-being for all her people. The young people of today know that life for them is going to be different and better, far better than it was for their fathers. Their fathers had to tramp for miles through the dust of summer and the winter's mud to the few primitive schools of their day. Now new schools and colleges are giving the youth of the country a proper start in life. When you see these young girls in their western clothes, so assured and confident, you're inclined to forget how surprised their mothers would have been at the idea of training for jobs their daughters take in their stride. Jobs they thought that only men could and should do. Now girls, as well as the boys, can take up almost any profession they choose and know they've a good chance to succeed. For all these young people now, there is the chance of a good education and of good health, the primary needs of any people. And it's natural that with all these modern developments, the women of Iraq are breaking away from their traditional style of dress, unaltered for centuries, to wear the practical, comfortable clothes that are right for this new life. It's a turn of events significant of wider change, of a more liberal attitude to life, of a greater interest in the arts. Ageless Iraq, a new country, but one that hasn't forgotten the glories of its history. A country that is now emerging from the shadows of its past to a future bright with promise, ready to inherit its true place at the center of the Middle East. Music 